Hello and welcome to the Next Gen Racing YouTube channel. Yes, we've got a very different look this week. There's no Sam, he's got a well-earned week off. So I hope he's relaxing and hopefully refreshed to bring us a few winners next week. I mean, nonetheless, we do have a cracking weekend lined up. A little bit of the changing of the guard as we have Chepstow's opening meeting, which signifies that the jumps is on the way and we can start getting into and gearing up for a big season ahead. So the week that was, I mean, the best place to start is probably the Arc de Triomphe. Some are calling it a disappointment, some are not calling it a disappointment just yet. Now, I think it's hard to call Tocata Tasso a disappointment thus far. Deo and Hurricane Lane both ran a great race in behind. I'm still certain that Deo is the best in the race. It looked like he was going to click, uh, click, uh, kick three or four lengths clear, but of course couldn't in the ground. Now, of course, I do need to apologise. You're probably thinking I'm sounding a little bit off. No, my throat isn't hurting because I was screaming so much at the arc at the weekend after picking out the winner. It's because I've unfortunately picked up a little virus, but it hasn't stopped the head from turning around, the cogs turning, and hopefully we'll be able to pick out a few winners come this weekend. So the best place to start is, of course, Chepstone. We have the Persian War Novices Hurdle, the first grade two of the, the season, I think it's fair to say. So you have Paso Doble as your three to one favorite. First Street is nine to two. Cours Serene, five to one. Compromd is six to one. Luxural Lad, 15 to two. And nine to one bar those. Now, the top of the market is quite intriguing. Paso Doble, yes, was very impressive last time out. I do think he needs to touch up on his jumping, it's fair to say, if he wants to win this. And First Street, I think he's priced at Perhaps a point or two too short a prospect of what he could be in the future. I'm not sure the first two are exactly ready for this assignment just yet. And for that reason, I think it's probably best to look elsewhere. And I've landed upon Luttrell Lad, who I think 15 to 2 is a fair enough each way price. I mean, let's not forget, Philip Hobbs is no stranger to winning this race. He won it with Time Hill, Fingal Bay, and I think he could perhaps have another winner here. Not with Cam Prond, who I don't think is his first string. I think Luttrell Lad is his first string. Of course, impressed last year when winning uh, a bumper at Taunton under a penalty, then finished fourth in the Great Tour at Aintree behind Naples Hill, who I think will go in in the first pretty comprehensively at a short price. I mean, he was by no means exceptional at uh, Worcester on hurdling debut, but I think this, hopefully this step up and trip will be able to sort that jumping out. And if it does, I can't really see him out of the frame. And I think 15 to 2 is a fair enough price. So a 15 to 2 luxury lad is going to be the selection in the Persian War Novices Hurdle. Of course, we're going to see three under through five, Brave Man's Game, etc., etc., on the card. But I think the Silver Trophy is the next place to properly preview. Now, I am a fan of Gal Road. I think 14 to 1. <laughs> I'm not too sure I'm exactly going to be getting involved at in that price, but I'll definitely be keeping a close eye on him. He destroyed Gunsight Ridge, it's fair to say, when breaking his maiden tag, when carrying two pounds extra as well, which I think is a, a good performance because I'm a big fan of Gunsight Ridge. And then, of course, next time out, destroyed good ball carrying top weight at Newbury. And I think that's a very, very good performance. I mean, he disappointed in the county it's fair to say, but I'd be surprised if a mark of 136 doesn't underestimate his ability. So 14 to 1 in the Silver Trophy, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on him. Will I be going in too hard? I don't think so. Of course, there is plenty of other exciting racing at Chepstow across the weekend, and I'm a big fan of Hell Red, and I almost think it's a bit too easy to be true. It's a bit too obvious. Um, 320, the four-year-old hurdle on Friday. I mean, Paul Nichols won this last year with Time White off the exact same mark and has pretty much done an identical route after disappointing in the Boodles and coming here. Hell Red has won comprehensively uh, since uh, odds on, jumped very well, was unchallenged throughout. And I think at nine to two, I just think it's a little bit irresistible. I know this is a very hot affair, this four-year-old hurdle. You've got the like, likes of Cabot Cliffs, Casa Lupi, Herbie A all in there as well. But I just think nine to two about Paul Nichols, he knows how to get them here. He knows how to do it off this exact mark. And I think 9-2 is just a price that I'd be willing to take. So that's another one on the card for me on Friday. Hell Red in the 320. We then move on to Future Champions Weekend at Newmarket. And we're going to start with probably not Future Champions. And that's the Stubborn, St Stubborn Stable Staff Awards Challenge Stakes. It's a group two over seven furlongs. You've got Alsa Hell as your four to one favourite. Goodness me how disappointing he's been since his two and three year old days. Dubai is nine to two. Chindit is five to one. Double or bubble, 13 to two. 
with thanks and Horace Gover, both 15 to 2 and Ufox 9 to 1 bar. Now, as I say, I mean, Alistair Hell, I think, has been extremely disappointing. He's only got his head in front once this year, and that's when he was very, very hot odds on. I just think he's been extremely disappointing from when he was well fancy, let's not forget, for the 2,000 guineas. He, he, he was a great prospect, and he just doesn't seem to want to get his head in front. And he's way too inconsistent for me. I mean, him and Dubai were second and third, respectively, last time out in listed company in the Dubai Duty Free Stakes. And I think they're both kind of hit and miss horses. I mean, I wouldn't comfortably back one of them especially at the, the top two in the market. I think Chindit, in fact, is going to be who I'm going to vote for a uh, five to one. I think the drop back to seven furlongs is extremely intriguing. Of course, his last win was in April over seven furlongs. Since then, he's finished fifth in the 2000 Guineas, St. James's Palace, the Mulan. He's been competing in top, top events. He didn't get the clearest run last time out in the celebration mile when finishing fourth. The sharper test is, is intriguing because I don't think he's necessarily crying out for it. But hopefully if he gets a clearer run, I think he'll be able to, to beat his elders here at 5-1. to one. And I mean, he's been a consistent customer this term. And hopefully he'll be able to bounce back to winning ways in some style. The highlights of the Friday, it's the Phillies mile. It's a mile, it's a group one for the two-year-old Phillies. Now, of course, you have Inspiral, the hot favourite of 5-4. to four. You have Miss On Scene at 6-1. to one. Concert Hall, 7-1. to one. Magical Lagoon, 9-1. to one. Wild Beauty, 10-1. to one. And 14-1. to one bar those. Now, I don't think we need to spend too much time on this race because I do think Inspiral could be a superstar next year. She showed all kinds of signs of that. She's quickened well. She's travelled well in her races. And I think Chidley Park do have quite a special filly here looking on to next year in the Guineas. And they've already said that the Guineas is the plan. And for them to say that as two-year-olds, instead of saying the old cliche one step at a time, I think is, is something to definitely take note of. But for me, I think the player would be miss on the scene without Inspiral, which I'm surprised to see was three to one. Now, she had plenty of ground to make up last time out in, those pre in that prestige stage. Danny went heavy odds on in play, and I think she'll relish to step up to a mile. I mean, she hit the line with plenty of conviction. And the, if, if you look at it from a time perspective, it was it was quicker than the, the class two handicap, won by a Rattus on the same day. So I think she's definitely overlooked. And at three to one, without Inspiral, I think she's the play. Now, looking at the duo, you have Native Trail as your four to six warm favourite after his win in the National Stakes. You have Bayside Boy at five to one, who of course dethroned Reach from the Moon last time out. Straight answer is two from two for Jair Lyons and is 11 to 2 off being supplemented for this. Lown Thorne is 12 to 1. Just the one run beating Castle Star, very interesting, 12 to 1. Dubawi Legend is 16 to 1 and it's 18 to 1 bar. Now, I am going to contradict myself here because I am an advocate for ignoring what trainers say and going with your own thoughts and opinions. But Charlie Appleby coming out and saying that Karibus is his most exciting two-year-old, when he has native trail there, it would concern me that he's, he's favouring his Group 1 entry over his group, uh, uh, sorry, his group three entry and over his group one entry. Now, for me, that's extremely concerning, especially at a price of four to six. And with that in mind, there's probably a couple at uh, a big price, big other price who I'd rather side with. Now, of course, you have straight answer at 11 to two, who comes here after being very impressive over in Ireland. And we know that Ger Lyons doesn't come over here to muck about, he comes to win. So he must be respected at 11 to two. But I think probably it's a little bit short at the minute. Now, Glownthorn is 12 to one. Now, Glownthorn almost kind of reminds me a little bit of the tenebrism last time out in the Chiefly Park. Now, just the one run under his belt when he beat Castle Star, who was of course second in the middle park uh, on his debut. Now, that was over six furlongs, which isn't his optimum trip and is Castle Star's optimum trip. So I think you can upgrade that performance twofold. I think that was an exceptional performance. And you know I'm a big fan when Aidan O'Brien saves them for the autumn, which they have done here. Again, you have the question of the, the lengthy break. It didn't affect Tenebrism. Will it affect him? Who knows? You could have another big 12 to 1 surprise winner in this. And also, Dubawi Legend is 16 to 1. Now, Hugo Palmer is absolutely adamant that this fella is a Group 1 horse in the making. Now, of course, it was very disappointing in the Acom Stakes last time out when well backed, but it was extremely impressive at Doncaster on debut. Now, if you look at the, the, the Acom Stakes, uh, at first glance, it wasn't a great renewal, but of course, Royal Patronage has since gone on and won the Royal Lodge. So it's not the worst piece of form in the world. And I think 16 to 1 each way, the sky's the limit for him at the minute, and hopefully he'll be able to to back up his trainer and show his group one credentials in this. And there we go, that's it. A very short video indeed, but don't worry, Sam will be back next week. And of course, we wouldn't leave you without a nap and the next best. Now, a nap is actually going to be a hurdler. Goodness me, I'm picking a hurdler as my nap 
on Dewhurst weekend. I don't know what's going to be, but it's going to be hell red in the 320 on Friday in the four-year-old hurdle at nine to two. Paul Nichols trying to make it two from two in consecutive years in the race. And the next best is going to be Miss on the Scene without Inspiral. Inspiral may be a superstar, but hopefully Miss on the Scene will be able to pick up the pieces in behind. That's 3.35 on the Friday. Hopefully a big 15 minutes on Friday, which will give us a nice little full pockets into Saturday. They're nine to two and three to one respectively. So, so okay prices and thank you very much for watching i mean do subscribe if you're new make sure you like the video if you're enjoying the content and do leave your comments down below of your lap of the weekend we have a sumptuous array of racing ahead and goodness me whether it's from new cars whether it's from chepstow or new market i'm sure you'll be able to find a couple of winners so hopefully we've managed to find a couple of winners for you and make sure you enjoy your weekend the national hunt season's on the way